Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with a familiar face, if you've been watching us before, uh, Leslie Pendon, who is the Chief Commercial Officer for Celestial Cruises. Now, we've tried Celestial a couple of times, about three times in the past. It's a great line, uh, the be one of the best ways to explore uh, the Mediterranean, and specifically Greece and Turkey and all those, and they have a fabulous product, and they just got more fabulous because they have a new ship. And we're going to talk to Leslie all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Leslie, where are you and how are you? Well, James, it's great to be here. I'm actually back home after a fantastic month-long trip to Europe. Yeah, we were following you on Facebook, so the, you, you can't hide. We know what you were doing. Yeah, no, it was it, it was great to be traveling again. It was my first international trip in ten months, so it was uh, it was quite special. And uh, I've got to say, it was a, a pleasure to travel. It was very hassle free, and uh, you know, um, even even with the various. Um, protocols in place, it was actually a, a pretty seamless experience. Now, uh, you were there for a reason. Yeah, you, you, as I said, uh, Celestial just got a new ship and you were in Greece to look at it. Uh, uh, and so you got a chance to inspect it. It's your newest flagship. Uh, and what can you tell us about that ship today, which is now, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. It's called Celestial Experience. So let's Indeed. talk about the Celestial Experience. Yeah, so it, it was great seeing the ship. Um, we had bought her recently, and um, she's uh, a stunning ship. I mean, it's a real game changer for us, James, in terms of uh, the quality of the product. Um, she takes up to 1,800 guests and um, in 789 staterooms. Uh, but one of the great features about this vessel is the number of balcony staterooms. She's got 166 balconies. And, um, you know, and that's not just um, your normal balcony. She's got amazing sea terraces and uh, veranda bridge uh, views as well, which makes her quite unique. Um, and one of the key features of this ship, which I know you're, you're dying to talk about, is the uh, absolutely outstanding panoramic uh, thalassotherapy spa that she has on board. Wow. Well, now you got my interest. It sounds like that. that's one of the, the great pluses. Now, this ship was formerly the Costa Romantica. Uh, did you have to do anything to her? Uh, but you have given her now an exterior paint job, which has all your colors, right? Indeed. So, um, you know, the, the, the ship is in such pristine condition. She looks like she's just come out of the shipyard. Um, so there's actually minimal work that's required on her. Obviously, um, as you correctly point out, we neutralized the Costa markings and uh, she will be sporting a brand new livery, um, which uh, we're delighted to announce. Um, and I know that you'll be featuring some images of her. The, the other aspect that we'll be changing and just some of the, the small elements around the naming of the restaurants, for example, on board to make them really very celestial uh, centric and obviously a key reflection of the, uh, the brand, particularly the, the Greek heritage and leveraging that spirit of Greece that we're known for. Well, you know, you, you, you got wonderful food, as people don't maybe understand how good food it is on Celestial. Uh, and, and let's jump ahead to that question. I mean, what are those dining options that uh, you have now? Very, very significant uh, in terms of the increase of uh, dining options. We're actually going to be introducing um, four speciality restaurants on board her. And uh, there's going to be a strong focus on blue zone cuisine and very much the healthy Mediterranean diet. Um, so there will be elements of Greekness in there, but it really spans all of the Mediterranean. And in addition to the four specialty restaurants, there's actually going to be two main dining uh, restaurant options as well. Uh, there are seven bars and lounges in addition to those restaurants. And um, one, again, very unique feature that we're very excited about on the vessel is this wine and cheese experience bar and lounge that we're going to be launching. It's a completely different concept, taking regional wines as well as cheeses, pairing them together and really showcasing them in a very unique way on board. No, those, that sounds wonderful. I can't, can't wait to take a look at it. Now, what about the accommodations on board? You said you didn't have to do too much, but you obviously have a ship now that has a lot more balcony staterooms than you've ever had before on a vessel, right? 
Indeed, indeed. And um, what, one of the unique aspects of this product that we're going to be bringing to the market is a wellness category. So it's the first time Celestial's been bringing it to the market. Um, so we have a number of uh, staterooms assigned to this wellness category, starting from the junior suites all the way up to grand suites. Mm -hmm. That will actually give guests the access to the spa, particularly all the thermal uh, suites within the spa, the two thalassotherapy pools, as well as a relaxation zone as well with beautiful heated ceramic beds in there. In addition to that, they'll, go, they'll also get unique access to uh, the speciality dining restaurants. And then we're also going to be launching a new beach club concept on the aft of the ship, which will actually uh, afford guests in both suites and the wellness categories of stateroom a completely unique um, Greek-inspired club experience. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so there's going to be more and more details released over the coming weeks and months about these new experiences that we're going to be launching on the vessel. But this just gives you a flavor for how unique and different uh, this will be. No, it sounds like you're going to have a lot more options on board. Now, talk a little bit about the public areas. You talked about the the, the the spa, which sounds wonderful, and you talked about there'll be more bars. What, what about the theaters and the lounges? Because uh, uh, I have to tell you, uh, uh, one of the things about Celestial in the past, I was always impressed by the entertainment, by the shows. Uh, thank you. Well, we try to do it in a very different fashion, a very authentic fashion as well. And um, on the Celestial Experience, uh, th we'll be taking this to a new level as well. There's actually two show lounges on board, and uh, we're going to have different types of um, shows taking place in both venues. Uh, everything from uh, traditional Greek mythology and historical shows, all the way through to um, some theatre productions and even even uh, potentially some uh, comedy as well. <laughs> so it's it, it, again, we're developing new concepts. They're not quite fully ready to release at this point, but we'll definitely be updating you as we start to finalize these new entertainment concepts and also uh, the uh, specialty restaurants. What one of the things that um, the, uh, the, the ship does have a very unique feature, in fact, and the only one at sea is a wood-burning uh, pizza oven. Oh, so, there you go. So, um, so we're actually going to have um, fantastically fresh, locally sourced produce where you can actually create your own gourmet pizza, flatbreads, and uh, it'll be baked on the spot there for you in this very unique pizzeria on board. Well, you better be careful because you, you're going to have to go head to head with uh, Ken Muscat and Rick Sasso of MSC, who always tell me they have the best pizza. So we're, we're going to have a we're going to have a pizza contest, I think, between the two of you and the Med. So uh, we're, we're up for that challenge. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Now, uh, what itineraries will the Celestial Experience sail on, and and when are you, when are you going to start? Yeah, so we've actually announced, uh, James, that we're going to uh, have the Celestial Experience operate from the 6th of March of next year. So she's actually going to be taking over the seven night itineraries from the Crystal. So she'll be operating at the start of the season with the three continents itinerary, which touches upon uh, Israel, Egypt, uh, Turkey, as well as uh, the Greek islands. And then uh, once she's finished that part of the season, she'll May move into her main iconic Aegean season uh, in the uh, Greek islands, um, featuring places like Milos, uh, which, as you know, has um, stunning beaches, several different types of beaches, and uh, these 2,000-year-old catacombs that uh, have to be seen to be uh, really en enjoyed. And then... Um, from there, she'll actually move into her eclectic Aegean itinerary, uh, doing Istanbul. We're going to actually be uh, introducing Thessaloniki as well into that itinerary mm -hmm. for 2021 uh, in order to facilitate quite a uh, significant drive market from the Balkans that can actually drive down and join the ship in Thessaloniki. But um, for those that don't know much about Thessaloniki, it's the land of Alexander the Great. So there's a, a significant amount of history associated with uh, the destination and it's also the second largest uh, city in Greece as well. 
No, that sounds fantastic. And, and uh, um, I, in fact, I was, I was on your, one of your cruises where I actually got lost in Milos. I, 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 got, I turned one way or the other, and the cruise, my cruise director, he had gone back to the bus, and I think I went the wrong way. And all of a sudden, I'm walking and walking, and uh, I couldn't find my way back for a little while. And <laughs> people and, 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 the, and the ship was leaving, but they didn't leave without me, thank God. But uh, it, was actually, it, was, it was actually an interesting experience. But Milos is absolutely stunning, as you mentioned. And it, it's a, an island that doesn't get enough attention, I think. Now, let's talk a little bit about what this uh, new ship gives you an ability to do that you couldn't do before in terms of itineraries, port call schedules. Uh, what, what, how is this going to help the line? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's an interesting question. In fact, we had already identified this vessel back uh, early last year, and uh, we were in uh, the proceeds of securing her when COVID happened. Um, so we were delighted that we could continue with um, the strategy of fleet renewal, which was very much uh, um, a long-term strategy that we had in play. And um, But the, the, the core and the essence of the product was very much to – uh, ensure that we remain destination centric. And what does that mean? That means calling upon ports of call that the larger vessels cannot get into. Mm -hmm. And that was really important to us. So we continue to maintain that point of differentiation going into these smaller ports that the larger vessels cannot get into and therefore bringing new undiscovered as well as uh, marquee gems uh, to, to the, the public and uh, for them to enjoy and also uh, bring a completely unique experience uh, to, to, the, um, uh, to the ship. Um, the other element that this vessel has is, as I mentioned, the whole aspect of wellness. And so we're very much going to incorporate onshore experiences with the whole onboard experience around wellness. And again, it's very much linked to the whole Blue Zone concept. Um, for those of you that are not aware of Blue Zone, it's, it's all about healthy diet, but it's also about your lifestyle and also being active. And uh, so all of these elements um, very much reflect the name of the new ship, Celestial Experience. It's all about unique experiences that we're going to create as part and parcel of the new vessel. No, that's wonderful. And I, I, it does sound like your facilities are definitely getting an upgrade across the board. Uh, and that actually goes to the question about what, what's going to happen to the rest of your fleet. I mean, I actually love Celestial Crystal. It's a lovely ship. Uh, it, it is about 30 years old in uh, different incarnations, but it's been kept up amazingly. It looks new. Um, and, and, uh, and then you also have, uh, I think you still have Celestial Olympia. I've never been on that one, although it, it's been next to me a few times. Uh, but what are happening to those two ships and what will they be sailing on? Yeah, so the Crystal, we're just in the process of um, looking at the options for her. So no decisions have been taken yet uh, in that regard. So um, we'll need to reconnect when that decision has been made. In regards to the Olympia, she will remain doing her three and four night itineraries, which she's known for. And um, one of the things that um, we will be launching for 21 is um, a new slightly adjusted itinerary for her at the start and the end of the season for the Olympia. And uh, she's going to be operating the iconic discovery itinerary, whereby um, because of the short uh, daylight hours in that winter autumn period, um, she's actually going to be doing slightly less calls than she would normally do during the summer months. Um, but what we've done is instead um, made those full days in each of the ports. So we're introducing the new island of Syros, uh, which again, is a, uh, a lot of history, a lot of religious history as well associated with uh, Syros. Um, but also as an island, she has a year round uh, community there. So th it's alive and there's a lot to do. And, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll, we'll also still go to Kushadasi for Ephesus because that's still um, very much a, a year round option. And uh, we'll have a, a full day in Santorini as well, which uh, I, I guess really value. And, uh, and then back to Athens and then on the four night it will be the same itinerary as the three night with the addition of roads uh, in there as well.
Well, I actually have been to Syros with you, with your 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 line, and it really is a marvelous island. Uh, I've done it a couple of times. One, once, once because uh, the, because of heavy seas, we couldn't get into some port of call. I can't remember where it was. So we woke up one morning and we're in Syros. So you know, it's it's as they say, it's another oast, right? So that's uh, it's, it's, but it's a great. They're all it's good. A, they're all good. That's the beautiful. Exactly, and and that's the beauty of the Greek islands, as you know, James. Each one is very unique in its own way. So, you know, every time you go to a Greek island, you're experiencing something completely unique and different to that island. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about you do some business with U.S. tour operators that offer Greece and Turkey tours. And and I've been on board when there were groups from different uh, well-known brands. Uh, And now obviously that business is at least temporarily dried up until next year. Uh, What have you what are you going to be doing in return? Are you going to really focus on doing a lot more uh, individual and group bookings on your own? Yeah, great question. So, uh, I mean, our strategy hasn't really changed over the last three years. We have been uh, on a on a path of basically growing other controllable distribution channels, particularly in retail and uh, also individual group travel as well. And what we've actually found is that. you know, tour operators are very much still in the market to um, to operate themselves, but they're just doing it on reduced group sizes. Um, so, so that market is still very much there. However, you know, we have grown our controllable retail distribution channels, and um, uh, what that's also allowed us to do is um, enter new markets globally. So, even though the long haul markets, you know, depending on how air returns and the opening of uh, the borders again. We we've, we were also on a path to accelerate our distribution in Europe, particularly in Western Europe, so the UK, France, Germany, Spain, and mm-hmm. so forth. Um, so given that, it's going to be certainly in the short term a lot easier for the, the short-haul markets um, to get going. We're, we're putting uh, a, f- a lot of focus uh, there as well. But um, certainly the, the long-haul markets, um, they're still very much uh, alive and kicking, and I think that's an important point to make. Um, you know, there is airlift there. Um, I do completely appreciate how challenging it must be for our travel advisors to figure out uh, all the different protocols and entry requirements for the different countries right now. And of course, they are changing on a very regular basis. So it, it is something that has to be kept up. But, you know, rest assured, we're going to do our best um, to keep them advised as well on uh, what's appropriate for uh, Greece and how to get to Greece. Um, what I can tell you is that um, Greece as a destination has handled um, COVID particularly well uh, to date. And um, as a result, um, you know, Greece is pretty much open to the world. And uh, as I mentioned, we have um, great protocols at the airport where they're actually doing uh, testing upon arrival, random testing. And, um, and that's actually uh, helping control and also reassure the traveling public uh, going uh, to Greece. Now, what about the health and safety protocols uh, that you have instituted on board or are going to have? I, everybody asks, uh, you know, I mean, everyone has sort of the same stuff, but uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you are doing. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been as a company very active in um, consulting with uh, both the Greek and EU health authorities in actually crafting the cruising protocol to start up in Europe. And um, as a result of that, you know, you you may have seen some uh, larger cruise lines have already recommenced in Europe and um, following those protocols that uh, we, we all agreed upon. With, um, with great success, I might add. And um, so that is uh, very reassuring. So we know that the protocols are working. And, uh, you know, come March, assuming you know, we have no viable vaccine in place, then uh, we will obviously ad- adopt those exact same protocols. And uh, no doubt there will be some level of, um, you know, uh, COVID testing required um, right. prior to embarking on the ship. Um, but um, as I say, you know, we're, we're all hopeful that between now and March, there will actually be improvements in the situations and we'll probably see some adjustments uh, in, the, in those protocols for the better. 
Well, I think you were talking, mentioning the two ships that are cruising right now. The problem is you got to be Italian or something, right? Uh, <laughs> which I'm saying, I, I'm sure that will grow into other does, other other countries and other uh, nationalities. But and of course, as we speak today, is the deadline day for uh, the CDC to either uh, extend the no sale order here for. Uh, ships leaving from U.S. ports, and it looks like from everything we hear, uh, they're going to extend that till October 31, uh, which is exactly the date that uh, CLIA and members of, uh, uh, of, the, of, of CLIA said that's when they'll restart. Uh, some controversy over who pressured whom on what, uh, but we're all at least thankful in the cruise business and for all of the people who sell cruises that it looks like we are going to get back to business here in November. So, Pete, because there's a lot of pent up demand and it sounds like it'll be all ready to go for the med by the time you, you restart and, and get this new ship underway. Yeah, I think there's certainly a lot of focus and attention being paid to the protocols that Europe has put in place. And, um, you, you know, we're, we're very confident because we're also members of CLEAR as well. And because of that, um, you know, we're, we're obviously keen to ensure um, that, uh, you know, there's, there's continuity as much as possible in terms of the protocols that are adopted globally, um, just to make it a lot easier for both our travel advisors, but also the cruising public um, to, to understand and deliver that uh, level of confidence around cruising. And what, what, what um, you know, I think we should all be very proud of in the industry is the phenomenally high standards of hygiene and safety that the industry has had in place even pre-COVID. And um, arguably now in the uh, current COVID environment, we're going to go above and beyond uh, what's needed as an industry to deliver that consumer confidence. And that's exactly what we need right now. Now, uh, any other highlights, uh, new itineraries, other cruise programs you want to talk about for 2021? Well, thanks for asking because, um, in fact, there is. And uh, what one of the things we're going to be doing is launching on the 1st of October um, our brand new uh, campaign, a whole new experience, it's called. Um, and uh, Who thought very, of that one? You, you, you matched it with the ship name. I don't, I don't know. That's very clever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, surprise. And um, the, um, the, the campaign is uh, going to run for the full month of October. Okay. And uh, we're going to have phenomenal nominal lead-in fares of $699 on the new Celestial Experience for a seven-night cruise, all-inclusive. Um, we, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be introducing a new junior class suite uh, and up in the wellness class, and that's going to lead in at $1,849, uh, again, all-inclusive. Um, but one of the things, you know, as I was just kind of hinting at, Delivering consumer confidence is the most important thing right now and also um, to allow our travel advisors to sell Celestial with confidence. And to, in order to do that, uh, as part of this campaign, we're actually going to be including free COVID travel and medical insurance for all new bookings made during the month of October for travel in quarter one and quarter two of next year. So um, now we'll review that as you know the months go on and see uh, how things are developing in regards to a viable uh, vaccine uh, for COVID. However, um, you know, the, the focus right now is to give assurance around travel in quarter one and quarter two of, of next year. So we are going to be including that uh, free of charge and we're the first cruise line to do so. That's great. Uh, yeah. In addition to that, um, we are also going to be um, launching a uh, incentive for our travel advisors, which will result in a super fam taking place in April of next year on the 10th and 17th of April. And it's going to take place on the new Celestial Experience as well, because there's no better way to show off the ship than having our travel advisors on there and really feeling it, touching it and experiencing for itself. And um, the, the other um, aspect I would really encourage our travel advisors to, to uh, consider is actually joining our agent Facebook group as well, which is at Celestial Cruises Agent Talk hyphen Americas, because 
We'll be releasing a lot of information on there about the new ship, particularly as well how you can uh, win a place on the Super Fam in April. And uh, just generally speaking, there's a great level of engagement on there already between our travel advisors. So um, I would encourage them to sign up to that and, and, and uh, don't miss out on some key announcements that are going to be coming up. That's all great information and, and some great offers for travel advisors, the fam, and obviously for their clients with this uh, COVID uh, insurance, which is really key to getting confidence back. And, and yeah, hopefully we will have a vaccine by, uh, by March or April next year that will be more widely distributed. But in the meantime, I, th- I still think it's going to be possible to sail given all the precautions and testing that everyone is going to be doing. So uh, that's all good stuff. Now, anything else you want to say to our travel advisors out there? We got about 100,000 of them looking at us. Uh, just let us know. Uh, we'll let them know what, what's going on. It's great news with the new ship and everything else. Yeah, what what I would say to everybody is that, you know, uh, travel will return, cruise has already returned, and more and more ships are starting up every day. Um, You know, Greece, there's huge pent-up demand for Greece and the whole eastern Mediterranean region, so do take advantage of that right now because there are guests out there wanting and willing to book. And, you know, I know it's still tough out there and it's been a challenging year and I think next year will still be quite challenging um, until there's a viable vaccine in place. However, um, the people are traveling and, um, you know, let's, let's work on this together as we all have been as an industry. And uh, we're here to support you. We've got a um, very strong North American team supported by a contact center here. So we're literally only a phone call or a zoom away. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, please do um, go to the Facebook page and enroll there because, again, we're running webinars and update sessions on, you know, what's happening with the various protocols. And these things, the more informed you are, the easier it will be to reassure your guests that it's safe to cruise again. Well, Leslie, again, congratulations on the new Celestial experience. I can't wait to see, wait to see her. Uh, it, it's definitely an upgrade. I, I love the Celestial Crystal. Uh, you have a great product. It, it's one of my favorite uh, cr- cruise lines because you are so destination intensive. Uh, it, it's the best way to explore Greece, to quite frankly. Uh, and then you can decide if you ever want to go back to any of these host islands. You know, that's what I've done. I still haven't done that. I've only gone with you. So, uh, uh, I, I, and I can certainly keep exploring that way too because it is a wonderful experience. And again, thanks th- very much for taking the time to speak with us today. James, thanks. It's always a pleasure. And thanks to our travel advisors. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.